The year is 1715, and outlaws rule the Caribbean seas. The Assassin's Creed games are famed for their historical accuracy. Apart from the one time Rodrigo Borgia became a supernatural battle pope towards the end of Assassin's Creed 2. So we should expect this level of historical accuracy from Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, which is set during the Golden Age of Piracy, which was around the late 17th, early 18th century. I bet pirates did that all the time. Pop culture has pirate cliches coming out the wazoo in books, movies, the internet five years ago, and that one day a year where you talk like a pirate. Did everyone see that? Because I will not be doing it again. But the reality of old-timey pirates was mostly not like Pirates of the Caribbean at all, and the makers of Assassin's Creed 4 have already said their game ditches the Hollywood cliches and Treasure Island tropes in favour of historically accurate piracy. The diving bell is a real 18th century device that sailors and pirates use to access deeper waters, shipwrecks filled with treasures, and secret entrances to caves and cenotes. If that's the case, we shouldn't find these seven dumb pirate myths in Assassin's Creed 4. We're watching you, Ubisoft. For a brief, shining moment in history, a select breed truly lived free. The enduring image of a pirate, yeah, is a guy with an eye patch over a missing eyeball and a peg leg instead of, you know, a leg leg. There is some basis in fact here since being a pirate was a totally dangerous business and being in cannon battles with the Royal Navy was a really good way to get your leg blown off or your eye poked out. Pirates could have suffered eye injuries that they covered up with a patch, but more likely, recent theories say they were either a remedy for seasickness somehow, or as a night vision aid for pirates with two working eyes. The idea was you would wear an eye patch to have one eye always adjusted to darkness, so when you went from the bright Caribbean sunshine into the hold of a ship, you'd have one eye already adjusted, swap the patch over, and then you could get on with the business of being a pirate without waiting for your night vision to catch up. As for peg legs, well, amputation would have been the main treatment for leg injuries. This is true. Ships were less sanitary even than festival toilets and nobody on board would have had any medical training. So the idea would have been to cut off a leg or die of infection. That said, actually surviving having your leg being sawn off was quite rare. So your chances of seeing a pirate with a peg leg were few and far between. The ubiquity of this image is from Long John Silver in Robert Louis Stevenson's book Treasure Island, which is basically pop culture's one-stop reference book for all pirate history. So don't expect to see guys with peg legs aboard the jackdaw, but keep an eye out for guys with eye patches. <laughs> an eye out, like it's a horrific eye injury. Yeah. Parrots. Every pirate had a parrot, right? Wrong again, all pirate fiction. Sailors who had visited the tropics would often bring back exotic animals as souvenirs and parrots were a popular choice because they were colourful and they could be taught to speak. Also they wouldn't maul society ladies with their poisonous fangs like a lot of other exotic wildlife. But while parrots would fetch a good price back in Europe, it's unlikely you'd come across a pirate just hanging out on a ship with one on his shoulder. You've got Treasure Island to thank for that enduring cliché, as well as... Talking like a pirate, where you say "ar" a lot and sound a bit like a farmer. Of his fortune and adventure you seek, and Captain Edward can wait your man. This trope comes from the actor Robert Newton's portrayal of Long John Silver in the Disney version of Treasure Island. His West Country accent has become the basis for most pirate portrayals since. Actual pirates would have talked with all kinds of accents, like this. But wouldn't you feel, I don't know, more welcome there? As you might feel more welcome in Parry. Fair point. savage seas are filled with fortune and unknown dangers which most men wouldn't dare face but we are not most men bury treasure okay the only pirate to have actually been known to bury their treasure is William Kidd who was thought to have buried some of his spoils on Long Island. In Assassin's Creed 3, it was William Kidd's treasure you were after on the Peg Leg Pirate missions. Captain Kidd's letters, boy! He hid a great treasure somewheres and sent letters to four of his crewmen along with a strange piece of leather. Kidd had the genius idea that he could bury his treasure and then use that knowledge as a bargaining chip after he'd been captured while negotiating his sentence for piracy. Brilliant! Except he got hanged anyway like every other pirate ever. 
The buried treasure myth mostly came from three popular stories from the 1800s. These were Wolfert Webber by Washington Irving, The Gold Bug by Edgar Allan Poe, and yes, Treasure Island again. Thanks, Robert Louis Stevenson. Chances are you actually will find hidden treasure in Assassin's Creed 4 because this is an Assassin's Creed game and in Assassin's Creed games everyone is putting their treasure in chests on roofs and in gardens for you to find like they're sick of having unstolen treasures. But just so you know, pirates didn't bury their treasure mostly. And we'll be waiting for you the moment you want to get after it. You actually found something? Ha ha ha! We fight the enemies who defy us. Yeah! And carve our legends in steel. Let's talk about pirate punishments, and let's start with the most popular in pirate mythology, walking the plank. Now, it sounds kind of awesome, but in actual boring history, it was a lot easier for pirates to just kill the people they wanted dead, you know, with their swords or guns. In fact, it was so rarely used, some 20th century historians thought the practice was made up. There are scattered historical accounts of it taking place though, and the phrase walking the plank is recorded in the book Dictionary of the Vulgar Tongue from 1788. Some claim the practice was used to avoid being hauled up for murder because the victim actually technically killed themselves by jumping into the sea, but I think we can all agree that that definitely doesn't count. Also, why would pirates care about committing murder? They're pirates. For across this vast ocean, men fall as pawns or gain infamy as pirates. The second famous pirate punishment is keel hauling, where some poor sucker gets tied to a rope and then dragged underneath the hull of a ship. If they were pulled quickly under the ship, then they'd get grated like cheese against the barnacles on the hull. If they were dragged slowly, then they'd probably drown. It wasn't a pleasant experience either way, which is probably why the idea stuck around. But as with walking the plank, keel hauling would have been unpopular with pirates due to being a massive hassle. Much easier to just give someone a flogging or kick them overboard. Pirates are busy people, come on you're actually more likely to be keel-hauled by the Navy. The British Navy used it as a punishment but outlawed it in the 1700s, while the Dutch Navy used it from 1560 right up until it was banned in 1853. Since we're following the crew of the Jackdaw in Assassin's Creed 4 and not Navy guys, don't expect to see much plank walking or keel-hauling. Enjoy your wine and women life. For tomorrow, we dance with death! It's nice to imagine a successful old pirate captain sat in his cabin, surrounded by gold and jewels, plundered from his enemies while drinking wine out of their skulls without spilling all over himself somehow. But that's not how it went down, mostly. There were pirates who made a lot of money and captured a lot of ships, but it wasn't a career with many long-term options. Most of them eventually got hanged um, for piracy. The most successful pirate during the golden age of piracy was Black Bart Roberts, who captured over 470 ships, but then died in battle age 39. The fact was, next to no pirates got to retire with their loot. You get the idea. There is one awesome exception. His name was Henry Every, and he captured a Grand Mughal ship worth some £600,000 back in the day, and that's worth about £47 million in today's money. It triggered a worldwide hunt for Every, who quietly vanished, you guessed, to live out the rest of his life as a very wealthy man. He's hoping for a similar fate for Edward Kenway. He at least has to stick around long enough to father this guy. Remember him? You are my son, after all, and might still be saved from your ignorance. I can kill you now, if you prefer. So those were the seven things we shouldn't find in Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag if it's historically accurate. Was there anything you noticed that we didn't include? Let us know in the comments and like and subscribe for more from Outside Xbox.